Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to a Venny's Game Room. Right, this is C64 Kickass IDE, and it's a cross development system for the PC which enables you to write programs for the Commodore 64. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth and start talking about binary and data rates and buses and all that, all that sort of stuff. I just want to keep it simple to enable everybody to just jump in and get some form of success. Get Just basically get something running on the Commodore 64. Um, it's not going to be anything amazing. This first tutorial is just screen colours. Now, as you can see, we have standard interface and you can load and you can all the editing stuff like a word processor and change up a case, low case, whatnot, search for stuff and basically most things a bog standard word processor does this will do but it has some extra things. You've got compile which will actually compile your program compile and execute which will compile the program and then run it and it will start the emulator and run it inside the emulator for you then you can compile it as a binary or you can create a C64 disk with it as well as that you've got a sprite editor, tile editor, character editor um, let's run sprite it actually just to show you. It's basically like a little mini paint package and it enables you to do your sprites. Quit that, yes. Same with the tile map editor. Exactly the same thing. You can uh, do your own little tile maps and things and map it all out and whatnot. Then the last one we've got is a character editor which is basically for making your own character set. Um, I'm not artistically inclined in any shape, way or form. Um, stuff like that I find quite difficult. Um, I'm just not the artistic type. Uh, so my character sets and things tend to look rather blocky and basic. Uh, as you can probably hear you, I've set off one of my C64 synth playlists, so I thought that would kind of suit the mood with it being C64 program, I so thought well, I'll get some C64 music going in the background. Now I'll leave the link in the description for downloading this, um, once it's installed everything is put on for you, you don't need to do anything and it'll create an icon on your desktop and you just click it click it to get started and what you'll want to do is go to file and go to new to create a new file and as you can see I've called mine screencolors.asm once you've done that you're best going and saving it because if you don't you won't see any of the formatting when you type and it'll have different colours and things for different to, usually for the mnemonics and things like the commands it'll have in different colours to basically it makes it easier to see and to read now what we do with this is the first thing we need to do to get started um, Type dot pc and then we put equals then dollar wait ten. Now what that does is it's a compiler directive and it tells the Commodore 64 that our program is gonna start just after the basic. 
Now what I usually do here is I give this a label. Like that. And what happens is when you compile it, you've, you've got your little output box at the bottom and it, it'll give you your, your memory ranges for where your, your different things are located. So I tend to give things labels so I know exactly what they are. So if it's going to be a sound file or a picture or whatnot, it'll actually list it in the code at the bottom and give you the memory address for each thing. It just makes it a little bit easier to read. Right. Now, what we do is the first command I always use is SEI. Now, what that does is sets the interrupt flag. Now, essentially, all that does it stops the CPU uh, responding to any IRQ request events. Um, long story short, it disables interrupts, which is something you want to add in all your programs. Just any program you do, just disable the interrupts because then you can do your own and you can have your own timers and things, it just makes things a lot easier. Let's finish up with that. Right, so we've got... Right, next what we're going to do is we're going to use the load command. Now, that's the load command. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the X register. So we put an X on there to tell to load the X register. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a value in there. And this is a color value for what color we want the screen to be. Now, what I'll do is I'll open color chart which I've prepared earlier. Now as you can see on there we've got the hex code and the color associated with that hex code. So what we'll do is we'll go with ooh, uh, purple. So the hex code for that is 04. So what we do is we put 04 in there Now, we press return, and the next command we're going to use is store. So, put st, then x, and we want to store x into a memory location, which is d020. And that's where the screen is located. Um, actually, I'll put some comments there, so clean the code up a bit. There we go. Right. beginning of a program and if we go to compile and we hit compile we'll get a little output window I'll make that a little bit bigger actually so it's a bit easier to see and you can see it'll pass it it does pass us and things and as I've said now you can see where the main program is stored it's given it put the label there so you know where it is 
and it writes your files and things and we go to compile and execute. Now as you can see nothing's really happened. Um, that's because we need to tell the Commodore to run it. So we do sys2064 and I don't know if you know, that was really quick but it kind of flashed and not much else happened so what we're going to do is we're going to add a few little things and the first one being a label So basically what we're doing now is we're creating a little label and we use RTS at the bottom of that which basically uh, is a return from a subroutine. If we compile that again, as you can see it's went through and then we'll compile and execute it and then we'll type sys2064 which is basically the decimal location of that, the 0810 and there you go. You see the border change and that's basically because I'm a moron and actually said the screen uh, the screen is located at D021 so if we compile that again make sure it's all alright and then compile and execute and then we type sys2064 there we go it'll change the screen colour now I'll add a thing here um, No, else. I don't really need to but basically what's happening is when you take your sys it's running that memory location but you, you don't really want to be doing that all the time so what we're going to do is we're going to use a compiler directive which will add a basic loader onto the the code for us and we do that by typing this basic upstart to and then start like that and then we go after where it's stored in memory and here what we do is type start so that knows to make a little basic listing for that program to auto run it now when we compile it as you can see it's compiled again and then compile and execute we don't need to type the sys command now you'll be noticing it's left all the writing on there um, we might not want that um, we basically want to just start from a clean screen so what we're going to do is we're going to use a quick and dirty way of cleaning the screen and we're going to use a ROM routine for that which is GSR which is jump to subroutine and this routine is located at EF actually not, uh, not E5 isn't it, yeah E5 44 uh, comment that too right now what that's going to do is 
clear the screen before it runs the program. So if we compile and execute this term, there you go, it's cleared the screen and it's returned back to basic after it's cleared the screen. Now, what we can do from here is, as you saw earlier, um, when I made the mistake and I changed the border instead, we can actually add something to change the border as well. So what we'll do this time is we'll load the Y register and then we'll look at our colour chart and we'll see what we've got. Uh, let's have a look. Um, let's go with orange which is 08. So we put hash dollar zero eight. do is we need to tell it to store the contents of the Y register into DO20 When we compile this and execute it, there you go, we get our brown border and we get a pink screen. Now, that's basic uh, screen manipulation, just changing the, the colours basically. But, uh, what if we don't want our program to actually exit straight away, we, we want to wait for some form of user input. Now, what I'll do is do that, and then this little bit of the code, I'll put another label here. I'm trying to make sure I keep everything labelled. Um, it's very important when you're, you're programming to include as many comments as you can. Um, it's very easy to get lost in code. Especially when you, you start to get listings that are very, very large. Um, I mean, I've got some listings in the loft. And yeah, you're talking page after page after page. and it, You need to know where you are. So can't uh, stress this enough. Liberal use of comments everywhere as much as you can. At least that way when you come back to your program later if you've forgot or you don't recall what a certain thing does at least you can just read the comments and it's going to be there. So right, we'll continue with this. Where the hell's my music gone off? So I could check that. Uh, there we go, right. Now, what we're doing now is we're going to. Anything. We're going to load the accumulator this time. 
with DC. Uh, let's see what one for this one. Yeah. Now, what this does is it's scans the keyboard buffer. Now, we're going to introduce another command here called CMP, which means compare. And we're going to input our little value. Uh, like that. And what that does is it compares the keyboard buffer. And if the keyboard buffer equals BF, then what that's going to do is it's going to drop out of the program. Now, what I've actually forgot to do is there's another command in here. This is what I get for doing this non scripted. Right. Uh, and that command is BLE. Now, what that does is that's branch if not equal for that command. So, what we need to do, let's get rid of that. Uh, we're going to put that after. Yeah, nice. So, branch if not equal. And then, as you can see, we've got our a label at the top. So, we put our label name in there. Like that. Basically, what that's doing is it's creating a little loop. And it'll continuously loop the program until the Q key is pressed. Now, if we compile that, hopefully we get no errors, and we'll compile and execute. And there you go, as you can see, we've got our border, we've got our screen, and we can press the keyboard, and nothing happens, but if we press Q, it quits. Now, actually, no, that, 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 that seems a bit daft pressing Q to quit. Um, we'll change that to spacebar. That's what uh, most Commodore programs tend to use. Um, let me see what's the code as it here, fine. Change that there to space and then we'll recompile it. Check it. Press all the keys, press the space bar and it quits. There we go. That makes things a bit better. Now As I said, you can switch your colours, you get the, got your little colour chart and just choose what you want and as an example what I'll do is we'll go with green, which is 0, 05 for that one and go yellow, 0, 07 for the other one. And then we'll compile and execute it. And there we go. We got two little colours come up and then space to exit. And we'll close that top again. Now, we've managed to set the screen up now. Um, I'm not going to go too much further. Uh, I think that's probably enough for now. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other things you can do. I mean, you can experiment, changing the colours and see what uh, what you get. But if you look at the colour chart, the maximum you can go to is 
0F, which is 16 in hex because there's 16 colours. Now, there's a lot of information online um, if you want to dig a bit deeper. But as I said, I want to try and keep this fairly simple. Um, I don't want to bog people down with buses and the program counter and all the rest of it and things like that. All we've used so far is we've used a ROM routine which cleans the screen. Then we disable the interrupts and we have a label for our little routine. And then we're loading the different values into the screen and the border. Then we're checking the keyboard buffer for input from the user and if we receive that input then we return back to basic now actually this no, no I'll, I'll do I'll add another thing into this as well um, so we get another command now what I'll do is I'll remove this for now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the command increment and then in there we're going to put the screen which is DZ20 now what that does is that will basically cycle through all of the different colors and it will create a weird little sort of raster effect so if we compile that to have a look at it, there you go. Now we've got the flashy border. Now if we close that down and we change that to 21, this will do the exact same thing, but instead of using the border, it will do the screen. There we go. As I said, you can press your spacebar to to come out of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to add like that. So now it's going to do both the screen and the border. There we go. Ugh. Yes, that kind of makes you feel a bit sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's a, about as much as I want to cover for this first tutorial. Uh, as I said, I, I don't want to go too in depth. Um, the next tutorial will be an atypical Hello World program because that seems to be what everyone starts with with <laughs> basic programming things. Uh, display Hello World on the screen, which is what's coming next. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get around to that, to be honest. Um, hopefully it won't be too long. Because uh, I have a few other games to cover in the meantime. And I, I don't want to sort of uh, throw too much on people. Uh, I want things to be easy to digest. And not contain too much information. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial on screen colours and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.